Hey everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up and connect the Flying Bear rotary attachment up to the Laser Man laser machine. I'm going to go into Lightburn software and show you how to get that rotary attachment turning, making sure that it's properly calibrated so that all of your graphics turn out correctly. And then I'm going to follow all of that up with a short and simple project of engraving a glass. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss a minute of this video. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for the follow-up video from the Flying Bear Laser Man machine. In that first video, if you missed it, I set up and configured the machine and I left the rotary attachment for a whole separate video. And that's what this video is all about. To get started, there's going to be just a handful of items that we'll need to set up the machine. Let's take a look at those right now. To get started, we'll need the rotary attachment that's already assembled. This is what it looks like. I've got the power cable already attached to it. On mine, I found when I set it on the table, it slid around a little bit too easily and I didn't like that. To remedy that, I put some little black pieces of electrical tape on each of the four corners, and that gives it just that little bit extra grip that I'm looking for on the table. The next thing that we'll need is something to set the laser machine up high enough off the table so it has the proper clearance for the rotary attachment underneath. I'm going to set that off to the side for now. And the standoffs that I'm going to use are some old pint glasses that I had from some previous test projects. If you don't have these, some soup cans work really well. I'll also be using a square. I can use a carpenter square, a plastic square. I have this metal engineering square that I'm going to use to make sure that the rotary attachment is aligned properly to the laser machine. And to calibrate the rotary attachment, I'm going to use a glass jar that has a piece of blue painter's tape wrapped around it. I like this blue painter's tape because it allows me to run faster speeds at a lower power level. And if I don't like the results that I'm seeing, I can peel this blue painter's tape off very easily and apply a new piece. When searching for a glass jar, I want to make sure that I've got a glass jar that has perfectly straight sides on it. And this one has exactly that. I find that a lot of jars will have uh, a little bulge or a ring at the top and the bottom that has a larger diameter. You can use that as long as it's not too much, but it will throw the calibration off just a little bit. With the machine up on the stands, I'm ready to align the rotary attachment up to the frame. I'm going to align the rotary attachment to this top frame piece and to accomplish this, I'm going to use the square that we had in our materials list. I'm going to pick one corner and just bump that up against the base of the rotary attachment. And I'm going to slide the frame of the machine until it touches this ruler. I'll move to the other corner in the front of the rotary attachment. And I'm going to push the ruler until it just touches this top frame again. I'm going to go back and forth until I have a nice even gap and I'll just keep adjusting that rotary attachment until everything looks perfect. I like the way that it looks and I'm ready to move on to connecting the motor wire up to the controller box. Here's where all the cables go into the side of the machine. At first I was a little bit overwhelmed but then I realized that once I removed the fan cable just to get that out of the way I found that there's only one connector that matches this four pin from the rotary unit that goes up to here. And it's this cable here that is all black. I remove that cable and this cable from the rotary attachment can fit into the side here. And this is the only spot where this cable fits into the side of the controller box. While I have power off on the machine, this is a good opportunity to take my test jar that I have and measure the diameter. My jar that I have comes out to 2.72 inches. I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper. We're going to use that in just a minute in the Lightburn software. But I am now ready to place the jar 
on the rotary attachment and I can manually move the laser module over the top of that jar and I can now set the focus. I'll grab my focusing tool. This looks good. Make sure that the laser is positioned back and forth at the very highest point of the glass jar. Here's a close up of what I'm looking at. The laser head is right there and I'm hitting the 12 o'clock position of the glass jar. And I almost forgot to measure the diameter of this roller right here. Uh, either one, they should be the same. I'm going to take this measurement and I want to record this and now we're ready to go into light burn. This completes all of the setup for setting up the rotary attachment, aligning it to the frame of the machine, and making sure that I have the focus set, and of course, recording the diameter of our test jar that we have. I'm now ready to power on the machine and connect to Lightburn software. Here I'm in Lightburn software, and the first thing that I'm going to do is navigate to cuts and layers, and we're going to see that down in this bottom area here, I don't have anything for the rotary to enable it or disable it. If you're missing this, go to the top of the screen to edit, settings, and there's a checkbox right here, show rotary enabled on main menu window, I'll click OK. And now I have this little spot, I'll enable that. When I navigate to the top of the screen here, I have this rotary setup button. I'm going to click on that. That brings up the sub menu. And I wanna make sure that I have the roller checked. We already have enabled the rotary. We wanna be on the Y axis. And now this is where all the secret stuff is to make sure that this is properly calibrated. I did a pretest before this video and I want to have 40 millimeters per rotation. This is going to be pretty close to having it perfectly calibrated. Your machine, when you first open this up, you might have a number of like 360, but I found a number of 40 works very good for my setup. That roller diameter that I almost forgot to take a measurement of, that was 9.956 millimeters. Down here is a calculator. This doesn't do anything except give you some numbers to use later on for reference. And this is where I took that glass jar. I measured the diameter at 2.27 inches. That converts over to 69.08 millimeters or pretty darn close to that. And that's going to give me a circumference of 217 and change. I can actually highlight that and hit control C to copy that number. And what we want to do is draw a box that's around the entire diameter or the entire outside of that glass jar. And we want to have the two ends of that box just to meet up. Now we're doing this so that when we draw an object that's a certain size and we engrave it on something round, that those dimensions come out correct. I'm going to start by selecting this box and I'm gonna just draw something very random. I wanna make it very narrow and very long to start with. I'm going to make sure that this lock is unchecked because I want to adjust the width and the height separately. And the width, I only need to make that something like two millimeters. And now for the height, we want this to be the circumference that was the number that we just copied in that previous setup screen. I'm going to hit Control V to paste that number in, and I'll hit Enter, and we'll see that our shape changed. For the next part, I want to make sure that my start from is from the current position because we will not be able to home the machine because we disconnected one of the motors on the machine so that we could plug in the rotary attachment. Now that I've drawn this long rectangle, I can navigate to cuts and layers, and I wanna draw just a line. And all I wanna do is just make a mark on this blue painter's tape. I don't need to cut all the way through it. And for this, I can have a fairly high speed of 80 millimeters per second and a max power of 50%. And for this, 
when the laser does fire, it is going to light that jar up with that blue laser beam. I do want to have my green tinted safety glasses that came with the machine. I am now ready to hit the start button. Here's a close up of that glass jar. I did see that there's a couple spots where it waved a little bit and that's because this outside edge here is a little bit uneven because of the buildup of the tape and allows the glass to rock a little bit. But more to the point as I rotate this around, this is the spot that I want to focus on. This is the end of the box and they're virtually on top of each other and that's exactly what we want to see. They're not overlapped and there's no big gap in between them. I'll jump back into Lightburn and if you do have a gap for some reason there, if it's overlapping or there's a gap, I'll show you that setting in Lightburn once again. My test piece looked perfect, but if yours is off a little bit for some reason, I can navigate to rotary setup at the top of the screen. And this millimeters per rotation, this is the number that you'll need to change. The last thing that I want to do is make sure that I don't need to mirror the image. And for that, I'm going to select what I just drew, delete that, and I'm going to select uh, the letter tab here. And I'm going to zoom in and I just want to type in the number two. How about that? That looks better. Now I need to rotate this and there's always a question on what direction to rotate something and on the machine, whatever the top or the opening of your object that you're placing, that should be the top of your graphic. So in the machine, that top is facing towards the left. And so I want to grab this and rotate this towards the left because of course this would be the opening of the glass jar that I'm going to put back in there. I'm going to use that same taped up jar that I had before. Here's that number two that I just redrew. It's in the proper orientation. The top of the two was at the top of the opening of my material. I sprayed this on using a mixture of 50% temper paint and 50% denatured alcohol. This thins it down, makes it easier to spray, and it dries so much quicker. I'm going to place this back on the rotary, do a quick engraving, and I'll be back in just a second. Everything's all complete. Carefully remove this out. And oh yeah, this looks so much better. Let me get that in focus for you. I'm gonna wash this off with some warm water and I'll be back in just a second. There's a nice close up of it. With all that temper paint washed off, this looks fantastic. And with using the temper paint as the masking agent, this five and a half watt laser module didn't have any problems perfectly engraving this glass. Using the tried and true method of temper paint as the masking agent to engrave this glass, it turned out perfect. These videos where I share information on how to set up and run the machine, they're some of my favorite videos to make right next to project videos. If you'd like to see some projects being made on this laser man machine or with the rotary, let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, learn, create, and share.